Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is practice working on scale factor. And this problem reads that triangle A is scaled to triangle B. And we have to determine the scale factor. It also says we have to determine the scale factor when B is scaled to A. So if we start with A and we go to B, we can see that we are shrinking A to get to B. And if we start with B and we scale to A, we can see that is an enlargement. So let's start by going from A to B. Now, when finding the scale factor, there's a simple equation that we can use. And that simple equation is we take the new and we divide by the old. Now, here's what I mean by that. So if we're scaling from A to B, the new would be B because that's where we're going. So what you do is we start by looking at the shape and we identify a set of corresponding sides. So I'm just going to take the base of each triangle and determine its length by using the graph paper that it's located upon. So if we take a look at the base of A, start here at zero. It goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the length of that base is 8 units. And this base right here is a length of 4 units. So with our equation for scale factor, if we take the new measurement, which is 4, and we divide it by the old measurement, which is 8, we could reduce that fraction to 1 half. Or as a decimal, we can say we have 0.5. So the scale factor when going from A to B is 1 half or 0.5. Now, before even doing any calculations, we should have known that our answer was going to be a fractional value because whenever you shrink something down, we know that the new image is going to be a fraction or part of the original. So whenever shrinking something, your scale factor is going to be less than 1. Now, let's see what happens when we scale going from B to A. We can see that is an enlargement which means our value or scale factor will be greater than 1. So once again, we're going to start with the new, but this time our new is going to be a base of 8. And we are going to divide that by our old, which is 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we would say if we are scaling from B to A, our scale factor is 2. Now, one thing we should also understand about going back and forth with our scale factor is that notice that 1 half and 2 are reciprocal of each other. So that's a way that you in the future can quickly identify the scale factor when you're going from one object to the other. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, this problem says that circle A, which is right here, is scaled to circle B. So we can see that we are enlarging circle A. And we have to determine the scale factor. And we also have to determine the scale factor if B is scaled to A. Now remember, if you are dealing with the same two shapes and you have to determine the scale factor, when you enlarge something, the scale factor is going to be greater than 1. And when you shrink something down, it is going to be less than 1. And if you know the scale factor in one direction, we can take the reciprocal of that scale factor, and that is the scale factor in the other direction. So let's start by going from A to B. Now remember, to find the scale factor, we are starting with the new shape that we are going to. And we are dividing it by where we start, or the old shape. So if we're starting by going from A to B, B would be considered our new shape. And with the circle, what we do is we just take the length of its diameter, which is 12. And we're going to divide it by the length of the old circle's diameter, which is 8. Now, this is an improper fraction, and we can reduce this to be 3 over 2. Now, if we express this as a mixed number, that would be 1 and a half. And as a decimal, this would be 1.5. So we could say that circle A was enlarged by a factor of 1.5. Now, if we want to find the scale factor, if B is scaled to A, we could just take our original improper fraction, which is 3 over 2, and write that as 2 over 3. 
which is the reciprocal. So we would say that we scaled circle B by two thirds to come up with circle A. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, for this problem, it says that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. And we have to find the length of line segment AB and EF. So the first thing that we have to do is determine the scale factor. And what we're going to do is start by comparing corresponding sides. So let's take the height of this yellow triangle, which is 12, and the height of this blue triangle, which is 6. Well, to get from 12 to 6, we would have to divide 12 by 2. And to get from 6 to 12, we would have to multiply 6 by 2. So let's start with line segment AB. Line segment AB is right here, or the base of this yellow triangle. Well, because the height of this yellow triangle is double the height of this blue triangle, then the same thing would be true of this triangle's base. It will be double the base of this blue triangle, which is 2.5 centimeters, or 2.5. So if we double 2.5, we would get 5 centimeters. So we would say the length of line segment AB is equal to 5 centimeters. All right, now for line segment EF, which is the hypotenuse of this blue triangle. Well, the hypotenuse of the yellow triangle is 13 centimeters. And we know that we have to divide 13 by 2 because we had to divide 12 by 2 to get 6. We had to divide 5 by 2 to get 2.5. So we divide 13 by 2 to come up with 6.5. So line segment EF is equal to 6.5 centimeters. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this map tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.